former Prime Minister, to my mentor, the Honorable Jasmine Bannister, Mr. Maurice Moore, colleagues, distinguished FNMs, ladies and gentlemen, good night. FNMs, I begin by extending a special thank you, a special hello to the good people of Long Island from whence I came. FNMs, it is with great gratitude and humility that I stand before you here tonight on behalf of the wonderful and hardworking people of Long Island. They've given me the privilege to be their voice yet again on this national stage. And I am honored to represent the place that I call home. Long Island, you know me and I know you. I was raised by you, among you, schooled with you, family there, business there, a home there. I am a product of you. And so representing you in the House of Assembly is a dream come true. FNMs, today is a day of unity. It is a day of reflection, but it is also a day of celebration and renewal. FNMs, I can assure you that we have our political tools sharpened and we are ready for battle any day, anywhere, anyhow. FNMs, we celebrate a track record of good governance, proven leadership during tough times, and the hope of better days ahead. We have navigated our country through social and economic turmoil. September the 16th, the Bahamian people cast their vote for a new government. But I want to say to the new government that there was an historically low voter turnout, some 63%. And out of the 63% that turned out, 53% voted for them. So they are what you would call a minority government. FNMs, the election defeat was a call for us to regroup for us to refocus and reroute. We were told that we were too comfortable, that we stopped listening, that we lost our way. But I'm here to tell you, FNMs, that we are listening, that we hear you, and that we are committed to furthering your vision, our vision for a sustainable, more inclusive Bahamas. Despite our loss, we have pressed on to chart a new future for the party. FNMs, the work continues. I represent a new generation, the generation that wishes to build upon and to continue the work of others who've been in the trenches. We represent the promise of our parents and grandparents, and we stand on the shoulders of those great men and women who came before us. FNMs, I can tell you that the last election cycle wasn't easy for me. But we worked hard and navigated the most vicious election campaign that I have ever witnessed. Silly season was littered with lies and innuendos, wild accusations and personal attacks. But my works and the votes of the people of Long Island spoke for itself. Dear Long Island. FNMs, I've come to tell you that Long Island is FNM country and it will remain that way. Dear Long Island. We ain't going nowhere. And as I said during the campaign, we are red, ain't scared, and ain't nobody taking our tanks anywhere. We will not be conceding an inch, not a centimeter, not a millimeter. And so they can meet me on the ground any day. FNMs, during our time in office, we faced the most unprecedented challenges any government has been confronted with. The country saw two significantly devastating and expensive storms that impacted the southern and northern Bahamas. We mitigated a global pandemic and made hard decisions when necessary. We assisted tens of thousands of Bahamians with unemployment benefits and food assistance during the hardest time in our country's history. We were launching the most progressive vision for the Bahamas a vision that will be fulfilled when the FNM returns as the next government of the Bahamas. FNMs, don't mind all that talk from them other people about believing in Bahamians and a new day. 
They're just telling a new lie. It's a new day for new lies. With the same old victimization playbook. The same old playbook. FNMs, I can tell you that our FNM administration made strategic capital investments in our constituency, Long Island. We spent millions and millions of dollars on water infrastructure. Before we left office, we turned on water to hundreds of people in Long Island. Hundreds of people, from Lockerbar to Salt Pond, Wimsis to Militon. I hear those other fellas talking about how we left out certain areas. We didn't leave out any area. We sent the pipes from Millis and McCann's and Thompson Bay. The road was cleared. Now all they gotta do is lay the pipe. We sent the pipes for Turnbull. The road was cleared and the trenches were dug. Now all they gotta do is lay the pipe. Hundreds and hundreds of people. Hundreds of people had, are getting water for the very first time, including my 87 and 89 year old grandparents. People in the capital, Clarence Town, people in areas like Salt Pond, and Bunk Ground, Glintons, and Seymour's. We moved for you to get Waterworks under the Caribbean Development Bank loan. At the time of the election, the bank was reviewing those works. And I trust that the new administration will fulfill the promise to you. FNMs. During my tenure at the Water and Sewage Corporation, all you heard about was pipes, pipes, and more pipes. We executed the largest water and sewer infrastructure rollout in Bahamian history. I led the charge to remedy age-old challenges that impacted access to the basic need, to this basic need for our people. And through careful planning, our team diligently executed. No amount of attacking me or seeking to dismantle me will change that. But no amount of attacks will change what was done for the Bahamian people. It will not change our thrust to ensure that our people, particularly those in the family islands, live with the dignity that is required by all citizens. FNMs, there's no ruler made enough, no ruler long enough to measure all the inches of pipes we laid. Hundreds and hundreds of feet and millions and millions of inches. That's what we laid from Long Island to Inagua, South Andres to San Salvador, Cat Island to Crooked Island, North Andres to Abaco, Elutra to Bimini, Acklands to Exuma, Ragged Island to the Berry Islands. We laid pipe while the mother fella sold you pipe dreams. Now, FNMs, more islands than ever have access to portable water. We also launched a rural water supply program where we took water to those parts of the Bahamas that you couldn't run pipe to. They can go and check the record. Those areas that were unserved and underserved, like South Long Island, they got water for the very first time. Like in Lutra, Bannerman Town and those places, water. Tell them talk that. I assure you, FNMs, that while at WSC, we did what we needed to do. And we did what those other people couldn't do. I sought to bring forth institutional reform to combat the unorthodox practices of the corporation. You know, recently I heard that persons who were dismissed for legitimate reasons, can you imagine being dismissed for teething or not coming to work or some other reason, they were being brought back in, in droves along party lines. So the motto seems to be, if you do wrong, just got to wait for your government to come in and they can bring you back. The promotions are being handed out like hotcakes, three, four, and five step jumps based on political lines while blocking and reversing promotions given by a legitimate government. All rules and procedures have been tossed out the window. A free fall, a free ride has begun. And mum's the word from the union. In fact, at least one union president I hear is not coming to work again. FNMs, I'm proud of the work we did in Long Island. In four years and three months, we undertook a major road paving project. Constructed a brand new eye-popping bridge at Newton Key. 
paved the roadway and redeveloped the Columbus Monument site, paved the docks at Sims and Corrins Town, oversaw the installation of a new Doppler radar system, constructed bus shelters, purchased and outfitted all the storm shelters for generators that we didn't steal, that we purchased from the constituency fund so that persons, when there's a storm or a hurricane, can go and now have their phones charged. They can get a warm cup of tea. They can get some light while the power is out. That's what we did, Long Island. That's what we did, FNMs. And we did much, much, much more. Tell them to talk that. We created jobs and employed Long Islanders in the 52-week program. We opened a new urban renewal office. And let me tell you about urban renewal. Those persons have been fired since the election. Even though they signed their contracts, and by the way, I got copies of the contracts. That coming soon. They signed their contracts and submitted it to the ministry. The ministry didn't sign off. So the dangerous nostalgia of victimization is rife with those dismissals. No matter what fancy words they now use, what fluff they now present to the public, it was rank victimization. And that's the long and the short of it. Shame on them for not taking advantage of this opportunity to show how new the new day was. We opened new road traffic offices in Long Island, opened a new passport office and did so, so much more. You see in Long Island, we don't sing it, we bring it. We made progress on the airport. And whilst I regret that we did not get to close the deal, I intend to hold this administration accountable, just as I held our administration accountable. But I want the public to know, FNMs, that the architectural works, the engineering works, and the survey works were done. The bids were received and the tenders were closed. The project is awaiting signature for the construction to begin. And I'm looking forward to us getting our airport. Now, FNMs, I got a couple more things to say before I wrap up. Though we saw a crushing defeat at the polls, it seems as though some candidates from the other side haven't quite come to terms with their loss. One is a young fellow who ran against me. Five months later, Long Island remains littered with billboards and feather flags and posters on polls of a man who seems to have deluded himself into believing that he's the MB and who just can't get the hint. On September the 16th, Long Islanders spoke resoundingly. No interpretation was needed. Though the islanders have asked him to remove the election signs, the fellow refuses to take them down. Three other candidates ran, but only this one fails to remove his signs. Mister, Long Islanders have asked me to tell you that they want them gone. It's time for you to put them where they belong, in the trash. He won't need them anyhow, now or anytime soon, because Long Island is red. We ain't scared, and we're gonna stay red. FNMs, the young fella even hosted what was supposed to be a apolitical, public, governmental event in the constituency, and didn't even extend an invite to the MP. He missed politics 101. That's not mature politics. When I held office, I never made it a practice to undertake travel into a constituency or have meetings in anyone's constituency without informing them, without inviting them. You'll find many pictures of me with opposition members during my time. I guess we can soon look forward to Bamzi being used as a political tool again. One should not speak to you, one should not seek ever to use the public purse to fly to Long Island to campaign. And so FNMs, I've lined up against many, against those who've had name face recognition in the past. We have shirked, we've never shirked against those challenges or in the face of those challenges. It is interesting to note how certain persons are now strategically placed in government ministries to help that other candidate or at a minimum hinder, destroy, or damage. FNMs, as we move forward, no matter the efforts for the utterances of our detractors, we must remain focused and remember that the work continues. FNMs, the race is not over. 
The real hard work has only just begun. We must look to the future of our party and to a new normal for Bahamians. With the world still navigating the COVID-19 pandemic, the biggest challenge we will soon face will be the fallout from the learning loss and educational gaps of our school-aged children. The FNM has always recognized that education and training of Bahamians are key factors in the progressive and sustainable economic development of our nation. I am the embodiment of an educational trajectory from a family island to proven success. Education for me was truly the great equalizer. There are things we as a party must consider moving forward, such as creating more opportunities for young people. FNMs, while we were in office, we implemented the first time, for the first time, universal preschool education. We expanded technical and vocational education, and we made the University of the Bahamas free for all eligible Bahamians. But these are trying times. That is simply no longer enough. We must build upon that and expand. Indeed, the government must address teacher shortages on islands such as mine. FNMs, I remain focused on getting the real work done. I will continue to be the strongest advocate on behalf of the people of Long Island. I will continue to carry a Tamron switch to Parliament. I will continue to fight for FNMs and for Bahamians in and out of Parliament. FNMs, we cannot get tired. We cannot stop in our thrust for good government or good governance. We owe it to ourselves, to our party, to our country, to ensure that the work continues. And I am certainly guaranteeing you that it will continue in Long Island. Evidence!